In this video, guys, we're going to look at what is post earnings announcement drift or PEAD as it's known as. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So important one if you're trading earnings season or if you're investing in stocks after good solid earnings or even after poor earnings, maybe you've identified a bit of an opportunity. So post earnings announcement drift or PEAD as it is known is when a stock continues to move in the direction of surprise earnings. So you've got a stock, let's say it's Apple, for example, I'm just using that as a pure example, no idea whether this is an anomaly that has occurred in Apple recently, but you get the idea. Something comes out where Apple earnings are good. So what happens, we know the score, the stock will adjust and will trade in the pre-market or the post-market, depending on when the earnings news come out, and it will open up the next day positively and it will probably close the day several percent up. That's generally what will happen. Now, efficient market theory says that actually it should be all priced in. Everything is priced in. So as soon as you know the earnings, the stock is now worth X, bang, that's the new price. But we know, guys, that this isn't the real world, okay? And often we get what's called this post earnings announcement drift. So when we have a positive earnings announcement, the price will gap up, the price will close at highs, but then it will gradually adjust to the new information and will continue to drift in the direction of the earnings announcement, i.e. bullish to the upside. So we don't just get an immediate gap and move and that's the, that's the reprice. We get up to 60 days the price is adjusting. So the price is continuing to move for up to 60 days, if not more. In fact, I think that was an average. So we kind of see good earnings and then continual buying coming in or money flow coming into the stock for another 60 days after the good earnings. And like I say, in, theoretically, it should just reprice automatically, right? It should be, that's the new value of the stock, but it just takes a while for it to soak in because there's an underreaction generally. And of course, other people start to hear it. And I just think about this a little bit like this. So if, if a stock has got good earnings, let's say, let's say with Apple again, and you have people seeing the good earnings and they buy the stock. Now those guys are, most of the time buying that stock because they believe that that stock is going to outperform over the next quarter, year, whatever it may be. Forget about the short term, guys. The bigger money coming in, they've seen the earnings, they think it's bullish, they're buying it. Now, we have others coming in who are seeing the earnings later on. They're seeing the stock respond positively to earnings. So they come in as well. Now, these guys who are first in aren't going to sell. So you have a fresh influx of buyers. Yes, there may be some profit takers, but anyone who's looking at the earnings that look good aren't, aren't going to take profits. Investors are going to say, hey, this is the good earnings. I'm going to hold it. So that's when you get this slight supply demand imbalance that causes the price to continue to rise. And it works in both ways. Okay. So we have positive earnings. We get the upward drift and negative earnings. We have downward drift. So negative earnings, missing profit warning, whatever it may be, gap down and then drifting for 60 days lower. So there's an opportunity here, right? As traders, we can either buy, and I'm gonna simplify this, there's gonna be more things we need to put into place with this, buy after earnings, assuming we're gonna get a 60 day move to the upside, short after earnings, bad earnings, thinking we get a 60 day move to the downside, or if you're an investor, how about you wait for a stock that's had poor earnings that you still believe is a good buy? Maybe you think the earnings cycle is going to change. Maybe you think it was a one-off, whatever. Forget about the reason for that. But then you get the negative earnings. You get this post earnings announcement drift for 30, 40, 50, 60 days. It goes lower and then there's potentially a buying opportunity for a retracement back up based on your original thesis. So you're not stepping in front of the train, you're letting it all soak out, letting all the sellers get involved in it, let the sellers sell what they need to, and then at that kind of area, so maybe around 40 to, 9, 40 to 80 days, something like that, you can assess the stock and think, well, can I find a good place to buy? So it does present potential opportunities. This anomaly of this uh, post earnings announcement drift does present some opportunities. And actually, if you look at some charts and you see earnings, you can see this time after time after time. Now, is it an aggressive move? 
Not necessarily. Is the meat most of the time on the earnings gap? Yes, it is, but you don't know about that. Here you've got all the information in front of you. And perhaps if you're a technical trader as well, you can combine it with a technical setup and the whole thing can hopefully drive in your direction. All right, guys, that is post earnings announcement drift. See you in the next one. Take care. Keep the risk managed. Whatever you're up to. Bye-bye.